How's everybody doing? Good. How are you doing? doing good. Definitely think he's made improvements um, just from understanding the defense, um, his coverage, uh, how he's fitting in the run game. Uh, you know, this last game he had some missed tackles. Got to clean that up, obviously, but he's still playing fast, competing. What do you want to say to Paul Sinavivo, who, of course, right now is you know, being looked at because of the defensive pass appearance penalties over the past couple of weeks? Yeah. Like, yeah. You talked before about having to kind of manage like, what you're going to get out of mm -hmm. all that. Has, Anything change in terms of the way that you look at that? Or? No, you used to always look at the technique. I think the positives from the game, you know, he got the penalty, but I mean, that's the fastest dude in the history of the NFL. And that's what I told him the history of the NFL. And he's running stride for stride. So, you know, his technique at the line was good. Just got to finish down the field better. But I think when you can stay with a guy with that caliber of speed, I think that's confidence for him. It's just, just clean up his play at the top of the route, his finishes. You know what? Um, you see some carryover. And the thing in this league is, you know, a lot of offenses was, you want to say Shanahan tree with all those guys. It's like everybody comes from that scheme. And you always say in the NFL, it's a copycat league. So if there's good plays on tape, people copy them, you know, and run them. So you see a lot of similarities in terms of what they're doing um, from last year to this year. Um, I'm sure it's stuff that Baker feels comfortable doing as well. Mm -hmm. Could be true, could be not. But it seemed like there was a lot of a heavier zone focus on defense this past week. Do you agree with that? And, and, and if so, like what was the what was the thing behind it? Yeah, there was there were specific things that we were trying to do, game plan wise, just to create some confusion for them. Um, I think it worked at times. Didn't work enough, but I think it worked at times. Um, and I I told the guys we just from a coaching standpoint, standpoint, from a player standpoint, we just didn't execute at a high enough level. And that's what happens when you play good teams. Um, they did some things we didn't expect we had to adjust to. Um, but I showed the guys, said we had this many missed tackles, we had this many mental errors, we had this many explosives. And I put up our fourth quarter at 16 13. You know, so if we eliminate half of those, right, and we, we play better, it's a different game. So that's our focus is just, just executing whatever we run. It's about us more than it is about them. Yeah, I mean, he's a big physical receiver that plays angry at times, you know, um, but he's been doing it for a long time. I've coached against him several times. He's just a handful um, because a lot of times you play, you don't play against receivers that play like defenders. And he has that mentality when he plays, but he's great in terms of the 50 50 uh, catches down the field, you know, his catch radius, his ability to run routes, his speed. Um, you know, they're moving around to get him the ball in certain spots where you can't put your hands on him. Um, but like I said, he's been playing at a high level for a long time. So, like, we already know what the battle is, you know. So, we just got to go and, and play our best ball. Do you do things different against him than against other guys? Like, is there a, a Mike Evans plan? Maybe. <laughs> no, for sure. You know, you play, you play elite receivers, you got to have something for him. Um, you know, whether you're rolling the coverage or whether you're putting something in to try to take him away. So, and that's what we do against most guys. But um, he's definitely got our attention. Joe, I think you guys' red zone defense is so good right now. I don't, I mean, that's my area. So I want to say I'm doing a good job in terms of the presentations. No, but I, I think the guys, it's just, I think down there, we don't do a whole bunch. And I think when you have confidence, you're doing the same thing over and over again. And then just the way DA sets up practice in terms of our meetings, uh, exposing the guys to the routes, in terms of the walkthroughs, we get an extra red zone period like today. And then we'll go out tomorrow and have, you know, really focus on the red zone. But I think all in all, the guys just doing a, a good job executing the game plan. 25% though is kind of an insane number. Yeah, I don't even. I really don't look at stats that much. I know that we're pretty good because we get them down there, but I, it, it really comes down to guys that's doing their job. And I think we're making it harder on the quarterback because we have enough mix where he doesn't know exactly what it is. And with rushing coverage working together, um, is, we're playing well down there. Has that been your area since uh, you got Yes. Were you good, were you good last year? Heck, OK. The possibility of not having Will 
I've always felt good about that whole group because uh, they're a confident group. They're a smart group. You know, we practice and we roll them in every position, whether it's strong safety, free safety, the dying position. So the guys all have reps under their belt. Um, so I, I feel very comfortable just moving forward. Yeah, that, that was our plan going into it, this, our different sub packages. We had a different sub package with him. We had a different sub package with Kool-Aid. So it was, it was just part of our plan. In terms of getting off the field, is, is that something that, you know, third down defense, is that something that's been an issue? Or is, is that more of a Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes thing? Like what, how do you look at that? It, it, it's been an issue. Um, something we actually addressed uh, this morning with the whole group. But it's really tackling the quarterback, uh, too many missed tackles. I know there was, we played Philly, we missed a tackle. We took 13 more plays, and we would have been off the field. So those plays add up. You know, we might have took 50, 60 extra plays just because we, didn't, we simply missed a tackle. We didn't get the quarterback down. We had him in our grasp. So it's really more of, of us just finishing uh, in space. And again, we watched several plays uh, today in the meeting on third down. Who's that? Oh, Spencer. Oh, he's. I, I really don't pay much attention to him. I just know when we have short routes, they always throw it deep. Um, that's scout team quarterbacks. But no, he's. I think he's a. I think he's talented. Um, you know, just from what I've seen, he's talented. He has the arm strength. I think he's mobile. He can extend plays with his legs. And I know he's a gamer. You know, what I mean, so I know he's going to be up for it. He's playing well. I mean, I was with Baker in Cleveland. I always liked the guy. You know, you got that moxie. You got that chip on the shoulder. Um, he's a guy that I know their team probably rallies around. Um, but he's, he's, always, he's always been confident. And I think the last couple years, he's, he's played well. I think he's settled down. He's comfortable there in Tampa. I think they build that system around him a little bit. But I think he's making good decisions with the football, um, just watching the tape. And the thing that people don't realize, I man, that Dude can scramble. You know what I mean? I remember him doing it. Before you know it, you look, man, he's getting out through a little crease and you see him running down the field. Uh, so he, he presents some problems for us. Well, I would say probably yes. Uh, not to get into it, but. I mean, obviously, we got a, a guy out there as a rookie. You know, probably going to do some things to try to confuse him. Um, that's what you would no typically think they're going to do, but we'll see. I know he can handle it. What's your view of the Colin What's that? What's your view of Colin? Oh man, he was so excited. I was just talking to him on the field about it. He's like, "Man, I needed one more block." Grando fell down. He cut me off. They knew what I can do with the ball, and they still don't have me on offense. I said, "Keep working." <laughs> Yeah, he was he was rolling, man. He was rolling down the side. So he was like one block away. But we talk about running the play. We just missed one block. So. What do you think uh, or he did? He did, a, he did a nice job. I mean, things happened late for us in the week. But he's been a guy we've been confident with for a long time, even going back to last year. Um, with not a lot of reps, I feel like he stepped in. You know, wasn't perfect. But I feel like he stepped in and did some really good things in the game. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. Orgy's a guy that's he he's one of the guys who can play multiple positions. So that's why he's so valuable. So whatever linebacker position, you can throw him in, you know, and he can function. So he's always had that value with us, but he's a smart player. He gets it. Um, he plays with confidence, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna need him. Well, well this guy late in the week like that, is it do you, do you have time to make adjustments or do you just kinda have to run the plan? You just roll. It's just one of the things you have to deal with, man. If you you know, this from my whole coaching career, guys go down and I see guys like, oh, what are we going to do? Next guy's up. You mean you have no choice. So you just always have confidence in the guys that are there. That's why they're here. That's why they're on the team. They wouldn't be on the team if we didn't feel like they were good enough. So you just make sure you go over them a little bit extra, maybe a couple more meetings, make sure they have the game plan down, and then say, hey, man, go play and uh, just be who you are.
Going back to the East Side, when you mentioned before, how would you describe the missiles? Because I know sometimes it can be, you know, they take the torpedo tactic and they bounce off, or yeah. at that angle. Um, or, you know, I mean, is it is it just failing to wrap up, or what is the make, like what do the missed tactics look like to you? A little bit of everything, right? Sometimes in the graphs we have them. Sometimes the guy jukes us. We don't take the proper angle. Tracking on the near hip, keeping your head up on contact, not leaving your feet. You know, we do tackling drills all the time. But, you know, when it's real and you're playing at speed, you got to keep that technique. And it's, it's really that simple. Um, but if you put your head down, you leave your feet, you're going you're gonna to miss tackles. And that's what happened to a lot of our guys. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of we want to put pressure on them. Um, we want to, and we have to be tight in coverage in order for us to do that. But uh, we'll definitely have a rush plan. It's something we talk about. Uh, There's different ways to attack them, whether it's four-man rush, whether we're bringing pressure. Um, but it all works together. But it's saying we, we got to make them feel uncomfortable. Because if, if you don't make them feel uncomfortable and you get him one does a throw in, he has the arm talent, he has the strength, he's accurate with his passes. You see it on tape. So uh, it's going to have to be a combination of everything we're doing defensively. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys. Hey, you're